Okay, I think I'm back. Maybe. Nice. Does it work? Is it fixed? Hooray! Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I'm not very good at Twitch. Oh, it's full camel case. That's why. I hate camel case. I don't like it very much. I think I reflexively only camel case the first letter because that's what I do in Go. But so if I do contribute, yeah, right. Snake. That's snake case. I mean, I like the uh, I like the Plan Nine ism, where I'll pull up a the, like an example manual. Um, like uh, ma, 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 ma. oh shit. So is it sig? So you can do sig. Um, yeah, like rune stir cat. Like this looks kind of shenanigans. Oh, thank you, Google Ads. I'm flattered. Is the static really bad? Well, it sucks if it is really bad. I tried really hard to... Uh, it, it, it's a lot better than it was before, I assure you. Maybe it's just static when I'm talking, because I do have uh some filtering set up to filter out anything that's not sufficient volume so you can hear my keyboard click 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 uh my little linear gatherons um and you can probably hear my mouse and uh the double clicking and all that but maybe when i talk uh the static shows up i wouldn't be surprised oh well yeah that would do it <laughs> that's okay I, I know that feeling. My X61 uh, does that. It's just crazy loud. I try to clean it out and it doesn't, doesn't make it any better. I was wondering where my cats went and they're both on the bed. Oh. There is a low buzz probably, yeah. Um, that's probably my filtering not being perfectly tuned. I mean, this is the amount of tuning. Uh, I have actually owned a T61 before, except it was a T61P and it was very loud. Or maybe it was a T60P actually, let me, because it was the high resolution version and the best part about the whole machine was how insanely high resolution the 4.3 was. Yeah, it was a T60P. I mean, I can check Postnix because I have the sysinfo for it probably still. Yeah, it was, there it is. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. The problem with the T60P I got was the battery was dead, which sucked, and it had the T60P, you could get it in either a 32-bit, 386, or 64-bit AMD 64 architecture, and I didn't want to desolder the CPU out of a laptop and upgrade it, though technically it was like intended for you to be able to, I just never did. Yeah, that's pretty good. 24.8 by 15.36, that's pretty good. I don't think I've seen one that high resolution in person. It's uh, pretty comparable to my X1 Carbon, which is like, what, 2556 or 2560 or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Anywho. Um, so first things first, uh, so TIS assembly, uh, I'm not actually aiming to make a full graphical TIS out of the tin. 
I just want to be able to as interpret TIS assembly and have similar things happen. Uh, but technically that's not like, it doesn't have to be that way. I'm curious, does it let me pull? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me find, let's see how this looks in Mothra. I bet it's pretty bad. Because I'd like to, oh, this isn't actually too bad at all. I guess Markdown usually translates pretty well. I need to find Well, yeah, I have the PDF actually. I really should just put it in the repository. Um, I was looking for, yeah, like the save file format. There we go. Cause really, no, that's not quite right. I remember the save file assembly having like some kind of nomenclature to indicate which node stuff went into because I, I i'm not really worried about processing the instructions i don't think i'm gonna there's so few instructions and so complexity that i'm not gonna worry too much about writing like a good tokenizer or a good lexer i'm just gonna like string uh well not i'm not gonna use fair talk i'm gonna use the um Whatever the plan nine one is. It's not tokenized, that's limbo. Um shit. Get tokens, that one. Yeah. I'm not gonna worry about graphics either. Just the kind of the textual output. Dev labels. I don't think I have my TS. TIS 100 stuff on here. Let me see if I can find. There's a piece of syntax I'm kind of missing. Ah, it's the at sign. That's what it is. It's the at sign. The one I'm looking at. The one I'm looking at is this one. Got it. The star is repository. I'd add it to my references. Nice. Oh, okay, okay. So that, that, that was the other main piece of syntax I was missing. Because I processing comments, uh, we just ignore. Because as far as I know, comments aren't significant other than for setting like the title of a program. But that doesn't really matter now and just be tacked on later or you just look for specifically that yeah so you would just do that um if so the so so that that's a nice idea and that the the kind of tis 100 in arrow in out arrow out would be good except that the tis 100 can have multiple um input streams and output streams and this is kind of where I'm uncertain what the easiest interface would be. On one hand, obviously I just want to feed it assembly, uh, but we also need to discriminate with uh, input streams. In this case, I'll probably just type the input manually or have a script emit it for me. Um, so we'd cat the assembly in first and then cat the input in, or we'd specify the assembly file and then read inputs from in. I've thought about that, except the problem is you can have multiple input streams in TIS 100, so it's not really a nice solution unless I make some kind of special input format where we use something kind of like the assembly where we can do like at zero, provide a big block of inputs, perhaps new line broken to indicate a new input and then stuff like that.
So I, so the problem with awk is uh, I, I am going to simulate a TIS-100. Um, and keeping data structures in awk is a little messy. I don't like doing it very much, to be honest. Anyways, we'll just start. Uh, we'll we'll read in text. Um, let me. I'm actually gonna just go to this guy's GitHub. Let's see, we got. Who is this guy? KK4EAD. Does that just copy the link for me? It does, nice. Add them to the list of references. And then I can just go in here. Oh, wow, GitHub looks awful in Mothra. Wow. I wasn't expecting it to look good, but holy sh shit. Where the hell is everything? Uh, <laughs> is it read me? Well, oh, we'll just clone it. Fuck it. And hopefully dget doesn't just fall over. Oh, I probably wanted that actually. Eh? And that right click was just a plum, in case that wasn't obvious. Uh, let's see, we have tis100. Oh. Save. I'm actually gonna just, um, do this for now I don't actually need most of these um, I kind of stole this from uh, the bank FS one so I was kind of desperate which is to say I was lazy make sure I didn't break anything okay so the typical pattern I think they provide an example. Maybe they don't. Guess they don't. I don't really remember what they return. Let's see. I guess they probably just return zero. We can read it line by line. We're gonna use B road line. So you say download a zip, but we do actually have Git, so we can just clone it. So it works out. Read the string. Duh, 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 duh. Probably won't be null terminated. Nice. <laughs> okay, it returns zero on end of file. So we'll just do. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about reading the assembly from. Uh... From standard input, I think I might just force you to run it with a file. So we'll just start off with nil. And uh, 
and just deal with that and then we'll read uh, input from standard input mischief I have no interest in reading the dragon book right now I do want to read it at some point but um, I'm very bad Ooh, that you know that is a good idea I'm a fact. I will read the dragon book at some point mischief I, I assure you um wait what do you mean what do you mean mothra 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 like buy me a dragon book mischief <laughs> mothra like like i say moth and then i say ra not mothra uh Mothra sounds nicer. It sounds more fun. It sounds more exotic. I guess it is definitely Mothra because uh, it's from the fucking... Yeah, it's literally a fucking moth. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. I think there's some kind of like content policy or something. I really don't know how all that works. I just know people try not to swear and I don't know why. I'm also not doing a very good job of watching Discord, so... It's very hard to have both on the screen at once because I'm bad. There, I just squish everything. Not that you can see, but. Discord's as small as it'll let me get. Mosura, or whatever. Mo? Actually, Mosura? I don't know. Oh, ha, I get it now. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I can't really into Japanese that well. All right, we're going to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lad, pull the, Oops. though I don't think he's listening. I don't know who Google Ads is. Probably I just assumed it was someone's burner so they could talk in chat. I'm guessing it's Halfwit. Um, I lost my train of thought. Be a red line. And for delimiters, we'll just use can only have one. I was thinking of uh, get tokens where you can have multiple. It's kind of shitty. Int and int void. Oh, I guess uh, my bad. I guess that makes way more sense. I don't know where I thought it was going. For some reason I thought. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just do. Let's see if that just works. Um, though we do, I would like to set up. Um. We have bio buff in and out, and then I'll do um, and we'll read 
these as standard input and standard output. And we don't need the standard input one right now, but we'll uh, we'll keep it around. didn't like that at all. I've already forgotten how it works. Apparently. And instru- oh, right, right, right. Well, I haven't written C in a hot minute. I'm, uh, I've, I've been in Goland too long. Oh, Synap? For real? I think I'm being trolled. Synap doesn't have a Twitch. No way. But if it is Synap, then I'm very flattered. But I have no idea how you would have found out about this. There's no way Mischief m mentions it on IRC. Certainly I did not. And certainly you're not subscribed to me if you are Synap. I don't even know if Synapse how you say your name. I don't say that name out loud very often. Except to Moody. Um, so what we can do now is we can use uh, be, be right. Hero. I don't know about that one either. I feel like Hero doesn't actually watch the Discord chat. Is there a B right string to see you tackling the juicy stuff, which would be the Lexing, unless I'm wrong? So you're right, but first I need to get there. And also, I'm very bad, so you have to understand. Half of this is just me remembering how to write C. And also, I'm very nervous because I don't usually do this in front of people. It's like almost as bad as going into an interview and sitting down and having to code in front of like five dudes that you've never met before. And they all write Ruby. And they ask you to write C++ and you get very anxious. So you ask, you can write go instead and they say okay. And then they ask you why you don't have semicolons. And that continues for the next 45 minutes. Not that I've experienced this or anything. Um, I forget how to, do you just use be right, I guess. It just accepts a void pointer. Can I just write the string? Is that a thing that's allowed? Let's find out. Um, we'll use output. BP is kind of a bad name now. This should probably be like um, F or something to kind of keep it in a step with what you'd expect to see in like a POSIX program, I guess. Not that this is a file structure. Okay, you say I'm about, you say I'm I'm avoiding it. Avoiding the dash s flag. Put in the script and then put in the input files. You know, that is a really good idea. I really like that and I think it's idiomatic. I might just do that. Seems like a good option. Make it part of the spec. So we'll do and we'll do three inputs. Inputs zero. One 
five inputs two. Right, we'll just do this. That seems pretty good. And we'll just reserve three, four, five as uh, input file descriptors. I wonder if this still builds. Is it B right? Oh, there's B print. I completely forgot that B. That's what I was looking for this whole time. Was B print. Yeah, you could also do that. Which, but, yeah, I don't know. No, I like this though. File descriptor shenanigans feels idiomatic. Like pseudocode, so you get mob. What would you, is a valid opcode, then go to the table of function pointers for each opcode. What I'm planning to do, um, yeah, that is, I think, a better option. I feel a little DDoS for not thinking of it. Um, uh, to answer your question, Google Ads, um, how I'll probably do it is I will build, and I, I, I vaguely started on this. So every time I get an instruction, once I get to the point where I have instructions, I'm gonna have opcodes, I'm going to have a table of opcodes. And each opcode is going to include a function pointer that passes in um, two arguments. And I will, just pass in and I'll uh, so treat it like an interface basically um, and then just have uh, an opcodes.c that just implements the base thing for each opcode and then have a do op that when again an opcode passes that in uh, I'll keep the str so the, str the string representation in the table okay mischief you say write yak but then I need to write yak and I don't wanna I've played with Yak before. I think I'm too baby brain for Yak. I think Yak is too galaxy brain for me. I just say, I did get it to work, but I was also trying to make Yak play nice with Go, which was probably my first mistake. Well, yeah, right. That's what we're, we're, get, we're getting there. It's just I'm very slow, and I've spent more time providing exposition because it makes me less anxious. one so yeah what uh, video buffering every damn second that could also be me yeah, I don't think my my nine front wants my code. I think uh, nine front wants nothing to do with my code. Which is to say, uh, if I posted this in cat v, I'd probably get flamed to the moon and back. Um. Okay, so I'll just scrape all of this out for now and leave that leave this usage that there then we go through and set all this back up do 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 Cram all of these up here, I guess. Make someone less mad on the internet. Right. Is that everything? That's good enough. Uh, is this the one? Is this the RC? Two. That will be inputs. And then uh, 
because argc will need to be at least because it'll be one always so it'll need to be at least three because we'll need the assembly file and at least one input file Adjust it. Oh, okay. That makes it very nice. Good catch. I would have fucked that up. Inputs. Get asm. Right, right, which is what we want here. So it would be, it would still be two. If it's less than two, it's still, uh, so mi Mischief uh, is saying, at least by where you're adding what you're adding, super new to this system, you can ignore it. Hi, pal. Um, I'm adding what I'm adding. So what I'm adding here, uh, and I guess there's, uh, I don't have a bridge in the Twitch chat to the Discord chat. But uh, what I'm adding right now is checks to make sure I have the number of inputs I want. So in this case, uh, when we run TIS100, or TIS99 in this case is kind of the joke name. Uh, when we run TIS100, we will need, I would just say in my implementation, I will need an assembly file uh, of TIS assembly, which, um, you can just like pick one of these. It'll look kind of like this. And I need one of those. And I also need inputs uh, to actually use these instructions. Because all these instructions do is move things around between TIS nodes. Um, and the TIS100 is composed of, uh, by default, let me check, I have the definitions in here, but uh, 12 nodes, which can hold like one value at a time basically. And you just kind of, the, inst the instruction set is just to move those around and push those out some kind of output. Um, so whenever, how, how I'll probably detect, like, so, so eventually for outputs, uh, we don't specify anything for outputs because I'll, I'll probably detect outputs by seeing if we move out of the like node matrix if we move outside the boundary of the node matrix that counts as an output and we just name it like out dot um whatever the node that we left probably will make it easiest and we just append to that or create it if it doesn't exist and over here like argc argc is the count of the number of arguments uh if it's less than two that is we don't have an assembly and we don't have an input stream to process or in a set of inputs to process we will need to uh, we, we we can't proceed so we just uh, crash the program so fatal just like brings down our program so we'd rather exit than continue in an undefined state um, so we get the asm so the file name is going to equal argv0 in this case and we know there's at least 0 and 1 index um, the zero index in this as mischief has asserted in the discord is going to be the first argument after any options we pass to the program currently um and that that's performed by argbegin and argand uh, these are macros provided with the plan 9 operating system uh yeah hennessy writing c uh kvik i'm sorry that i'm doing this to you uh, i know you don't like my c but i i don't particularly like my c either I much prefer writing Go, but Mischief doesn't like my Go, so I can just never win. So now I just don't code. I just read JavaScript for a living. That's my fate. Um, so that's the file name, and then we're going to need 
the maximum number of inputs is going to be is going to reflect the maximum number of outputs so we can't have more inputs than we have outputs so the number of outputs is technically going to be the number of border nodes in our matrix which will be um, so we can derive this because normally it's going to be like x x x x x x x x x x x and that's what a normal tis looks like um, so these ver this row are all valid outputs this row is all valid outputs so we can derive this as the width times two um, plus um, the height minus two. Um, so uh, how we know this? So so we can verify this real quick. Um, the width. Hi, Mora. It's good to see you. I'm actually surprised that anyone's here at all. I'm glad you're here too. I'm just, I'm assuming you're the Mora I'm thinking of. Mora, aka Noise, aka, uh, yeah, there you go. Apparently, aka Mora Lily. Uh, so let's see, width. Uh, the width here is four times two plus. Oh God, I hit insert. Um, Control F is the autocomplete in Plan Nine. This is the same as the pressing the insert key. It just sends the same signal as the insert key. Um, there's no like tab completion and really uh, the control F insert input autocomplete is not what anyone thinks it is all right so this um, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 times 2 plus 1 equals 9 and we have 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 that's a off by one error what did I do Width times two minus the height. Hold on, I need to add another row. My plus the height minus two. Insert right, yeah, yeah, yeah. As I was saying, is insert also works instead of Control F because it's like the same input. Uh, so I'll just establish the number of outputs first. We have 4, 8, 10, 12. So we know there's 12 outputs. And if somebody like figures this out before me, uh, the coffee hasn't quite kicked in yet. So feel free to share. Is this stream from Plan 9? Well, Mora, uh, do you happen to have um, the encoding software necessary for Plan nine to stream this. I last I checked, AVI isn't supported on Twitch, but that would be very novel. But I don't think there exists a connection on Earth that has sufficient bandwidth to actually let this stream uh, AVI from anywhere. I think I'd need like a fiber uplink in Twitch HQ for it to work. Okay, so there's twelve outputs: four, four, two, two. Uh, 12 outputs. It's certainly width times 2. I'm not really concerned about that. It doesn't really matter. It could be uh, height times 2 and the same difference. But width times 2 that knocks out all of these. And then we need to just get these two, which height minus 2, I feel like. Let's see that. Height minus 2 times 2? Maybe? Um, that would give us a 4. 4 times 2 plus um, height is 4 minus 2 and that equals 8 plus 2 times 2 equals 12. There we go. We got there. Okay, so this is going to be My formula. I'll just, you know, n tall is bad. This is height. This is width. 
Eric Vick, uh, writing a little script just called 2JPEG uh, from dev screen, piping that into a Twitch command would be very pleasant if that actually worked. Unfortunately, I don't think it does. Um, so we're gonna establish number of outputs. We need the number of outputs before we check the number of inputs. I could probably make this a macro but I'll be completely honest, I really don't want to. So we'll just make it a, a variable. Uh, the lad pill, you'd still need audio if you use the while loop solution into JPEG, you're right, but you could just use another file descriptor. Kind of like Amavec's example for getting multiple inputs uh, serially. I shouldn't say serially, but like uh, with one line rather than multiple arguments, and but we ended up using a variadic solution. Number of outputs, that should just work because we're using constants. We'll do this, this, and that gets us the number of outputs. That might be useful to make global. It's not going to change ever, so we'll just... Uh, Just stuff it up here and we'll make it a, uh, I think I just do extern int. Honestly, I don't remember. Extern int and out. I wonder if that just works. Huh, neat. Okay. Twitch FS would be nice. Uh, Pow42. Uh, what's the whole X thing and where did it come from? The X, um, so if you Google a picture of the TIS 100, it looks like a matrix of boxes. Uh, this X thing I sketched out in the little scratch window here in the bottom corner, uh, these represent, uh, so if we look at the uh, assembly instructions for the TIS 100, you'll see it says move up, move down, move right, move down, move up, move left move up down uh so like move up down means move from the node above us to the mo the node below us uh an input uh the input is usually just a number is my is my understanding honestly i haven't beaten tis 100 um i got bored uh but i thought it was really cool i just uh, I, i'd rather do anything else like play mario maker uh but you just move information around between nodes and so to we, we we need to derive the number of outputs so uh since we can move information between nodes in this case represented by the x's um it's not hard to imagine like uh if we have the number one go in here and we move up move down one goes here one goes here one goes here it comes out the other end right here um and so it goes all the way through this way um and I think Tiz actually has rules, so if something's an input, it can't be an output, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're basically just looking at the number, like the maximum number of outputs, um, which I guess it should be called max outs. Do that real quick. Um, validate our build real quick. Name not declare. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this would be an input here, come in to the matrix of nodes and it goes into here and then it goes into here and then it goes into here and then it goes into here then it comes out here. So this becomes an output node. The total number of output nodes are the edge nodes in this matrix. And we need, and this was deriving a formula to determine how many outputs there could possibly be kind of under the assumption that uh the um oh, we are actually going to keep a because the n outs will just be um the the number of outputs will just be max outs minus n inputs Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you send co you you don't send commands in. We ingest an assembly program that tells us how to handle input. So we can only have one assembly loaded in at once, uh, as like the rules for how we handle input. And then we take that input. It comes into a node that gets passed around as per the rules here. So if it was just um, like move up, down, move up, down, move up, down to pass it all the way through. It comes in here, goes down all the way through these, comes out here. When it comes out here, uh, we need to know, uh, we don't, we want to verify the, imp the, uh, the number of inputs the user has given us to make sure it's allowed. So we don't want the number of inputs to be greater than the number of uh, outputs. We want them to be the same number, uh, ideally. Um, so, so in this case, um, oh, let's say since like numbers can't escape the matrix from the middle, we need to find only the number of edge nodes, and that's what this finds. That's what this formula finds. There's probably a faster way to do this, um, or a shorter way to do this mathematically, but the, I think this is fairly legible. All things considered, so. We'll use that. Um, so we get inputs. Um, do that. Ooh, we could actually use n inputs here instead of i. It's kind of a neat idea, isn't it? Because we don't need i. kind of fun um, because n inputs will be at least one and it will go up for everything we find uh, and then we'll do um, if n inputs is greater than equal to um, is greater than max out and this doesn't account for uh, odd numbers this division but it will be good enough for now divided by two because we're working with an even number. i guess you since it's a matrix it's always going to be an even number of nodes i think is that how that works my brain tells me that there will always be an even number of nodes my intuition the number of inputs cannot exceed half of the number of outputs and if it does too many inputs expected percent d um and inputs or max out divided by two but tester build cool set and not used f name i bet it is oh is it complaining about how this isn't used that's fine ah, there we go it was right okay probably make it a rule that um the file names must have like inputs um, zero through max out. So we'll have to do a check on the input file names. Uh, so I, could it be, be, because it needs to specify which node it goes into and it would be nice if the input files just had a specified name uh, in the file name when it's passed in and we can derive that information there or else we'd need a header at the top of it that uses syntax like the ASM where it's like at zero and that just feels kind of erroneous. I don't really like it. It's like mixing um, input information and uh, like stuff to actually process. Okay, so that out. That's what I expected. Here, we'll just do this. Yeah. 
All right, so now I need an ASM file. We'll just steal this one. Or LC save. All right, I copied all of them in. I forgot about that. Um, so we'll just do a dot out. We'll feed it this, and then we'll feed it. Uh, that, which level is this? I guess I could probably derive the information from uh, from reading the assembly where it comes in. So at zero. I don't really know how the TIS100 numbering scheme counts. I think it's left to right, and it starts in the first row and goes down. So like this would be um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So at 0, 0 is an input here. Move right down. I don't really know. I need to run. I need to see a TIS 100. <laughs> Hold up. Um, da, 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 da. But if somebody actually has the answer, that'd be fantastic. Um, copy image. Location. Oh man. So it would be nice to have multiple inputs. Hmm. Oh, I don't think the TIS one hundred actually shows like uh I don't know if it actually shows like uh, the number outside of the save file. That's kind of annoying. Hmm. Because this assembly wouldn't make sense if zero was an input. Well, maybe it does. Hold on. No, no way. Move right down to move up left. Oh, no, it does because two is to the right of it here. Yeah, it has to use this scheme. Yeah. Yeah, Tiz 100 is a pretty cool game. It's by Zactronics. Um, Zactronics makes good games. That's all I have to say. It's like a assembly programming a imaginary machine within the, an assembly language. I mean, like this, you can kind of see it. Um, the big gimmick is that the way it works is you you can only really move stuff between CPUs, and each CPU basically just has like one register. Um. Like it has, uh, well it has, let's see, there's the ACK, there's the BACK, there's the LAST, and there's the MODE. Um, here's, a, here's a link to a good image. And so there's the ACK register, the BACK register, the LAST register, and MODE, which MODE isn't like something you can write to, it just, uh, it's just like the status information for a given um, TIS node in the matrix. Hi Marcy. How are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Um so let's make a series of inputs. Um I think there are two inputs in this one. So there's if we come back to this chart, and this is actually one taller than the actual TIS 100 is. Um, assuming my theory is correct about this numbering scheme, um, we're gonna get an input 
here. Um, what? I don't remember the alt code for down arrow. Oh, there it is. We get one input there. And then number one moves things from the right. We can do that. Number two says move up left. That's what that is. Do that. Three is move up down. So there's another input here. What? Oh, move up left. Wow, this can't be right. Move up, down. Number four. Is that. Move up, down. Or wait. Four. Move up, down. Five. Move up, down. Six, move up, right. Seven, move left, down. Hmm. Number two, three, move up, down, I think this is roughly what this is supposed to look like. So zero, move up, down, oh I see. One, move right down. Two, move up left. Three, move up down. Four, move up down. This can't be right because this would dead end here. I wonder what this program does. I don't even know if this is a good solution. I really should have like an actual puzzle and then the solution for it side by side. Hmm. I also don't even know if this guy's solutions are correct. Oh yeah, I found someone else's numbered save for this exact one and it's totally different. So maybe this is correct. Well, I'm just going to go with my theory is correct on how the matrices are numbered and we're just gonna go with that. Um. Which we'll say they're numbered in this scheme. Oh man. Uh, so I'll just make a really easy make do demo. See demo. We're going to make a um, test of asm, and we're going to make a input. for zero and that's it and and we're gonna write we're gonna get rid of all this we're gonna write a little asm that 
takes us down and just passes it all along the left hand side and we ignore everything else. So we will need to do um, at zero, move up, down, right? And uh, I'm going to implement case insensitivity because uh, holy shit, I don't like holding the shift key. So at four, move up, down. And at eight, move up, down. Yeah, there we go. And we will allow alternate at blocks to exist. So if there's like extraneous at blocks inside for registers that are not registers, but matrix elements that don't exist, then we're not going to worry about them. We're going to ingest them, pass them through like nothing ever happened. Um, so if there's like, in this case, if we had an at for five, and we know what, we'll, uh, we'll add this in right now. We're going to put it out of order too, just to make sure we handle it okay. We're going to do at five. There's going to be nothing here. Yeah, there we go. Because we don't do anything with five, but we'll ingest this block just fine. Okay, so I need to figure out how to store the instruction chain for this. I could just store it as a singly linked list, and I could just steal my singly linked list implementation I have lying around that I used for uh, my kernel fuzzer, among other things. A uh, singly linked list since we only need to walk it in one direction at a time. Well, actually, we can make it a. We can pack the instructions for each tis thing at a time because we know how many lines. A, a, a tis node can only hold so many lines of instructions at a time. Looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we'll make a there are how many lines did I said 15? 15 instructions. For node, 14 opcodes total. And this is already written down in places, but this is partially also just for me. Uh, so I like actually have uh, have this in my head. Total node numbering Say DMR is rolling in this grave mischief. I'm sorry, I'm not nearly as good of a C programmer as the guy who made C. I guess that's technically Ken. Richie counts though.
DMR. Do we actually have, oh, we do have a Dennis emoji in the Discord. That's important. <laughs> okay, let's see, we got tag, and then we have comments. It'd be kind of fun to support slash slash comments too, but we'll just, um, we'll just do this for now. We'll ignore, ignore all comments for now. And I'll change this since it might actually deviate slightly from the TIS 100, but it would be nice if it's fully compatible. But I am ignoring certain parts of the uh, specification. Okay, so we have that. Worry about that later. Um, Test.asm, we have this. Um, touch test.inputs. Right, 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 right. We already we have input zero. That's what it is. Now we're going to do 12, 31, 20, 25, 75, something bigger, something smaller, something negative, um, something with leading zero. There we go. Nah, there should be a new line at the end. We'll see what happens. All right, that should be enough to get us started, and we should expect to see these inputs come in in the same order back out. Okay, and so we can do demo slash test.asm, demo slash Input zero. Oh, right, 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 right. Not enough argument. Need one as and one output. What? What? Oops. Cool. We get the file. Oh, God. Hold on, is that like, <laughs> what the fuck? The same file multiple times. Am I like, doing something wrong with this? Bprint. We don't reopen it multiple times, do we? Yeah, halfway. You aren't missing anything, don't worry. We're not doing anything interesting here. It's not allowed. Unless you're missing mischief's commentary on how just terrible I am at writing C. Which is to say I'm very out of practice, but also I'm doing it in front of people, which makes it so much worse. <laughs> Um, I am very interested in why this is repeating. I'm a little confused. It must be like me misusing B read line or something. And I'm just, uh, int delimiter. Read the string from the file associated with BP up to and including the first delimiter character. The delimiter character at the end of the line is not altered. Thus, returned string probably won't be null terminated. B read line returns a pointer to the start of the line. Or zero on end of file or read error. Zero. Okay. Is nil zero? Is nil count as zero? I don't think that counts as zero. I guess you can return a zero pointer, but it, I, I guess that's the equivalent of nil, because nil is just void pointer cast to zero. Returns be line len. 
and the length, including the delimiter of the most recent line returned by B read line. I don't understand. I mean, I guess. Let's do that. Does the same thing. Why is it duplicating? I don't understand. Is it because I'm like not explicitly flushing? No, because it flushes at terminate. I'm very confused. Hmm. Maybe I should use B read stir instead of B read line. It returns an allocated buffer, but that's fine. Kvik, uh, if it hates the user agent HJDix, try changing it to mozzarella. <laughs> I, I, I use the user agent mozzarella sometimes when I'm writing scripts, and I think it's kind of fun. Maybe it'll like it because it starts with M-O-Z. Hmm. Kavik's probably not listening. Never mind. Sign up to experience the best of Hennessy. What is the best of Hennessy, Bitmapper? What? Mazzarella? What do you call it? How do you say mozzarella? Oh shit, Kavik is listening. What do you mean? What do you mean what kind of pronunciation is that? I don't understand. I'm in protest. What? What's the correct way? Ta, I'm gonna need like, make me a uh, Glenda dictionary function. So we can get the uh, pronunciations in chat. Mozzarella is the correct way. I agree. I agree. Mozzarella is the correct way. <laughs> Thank you, Olivec. Apparent. Oh wait. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, or use Birdster. We'll return an arbitrary long line. to set. Da, 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 da. So I'm not Googling. Uh, Google looks like ass in Mothra. Excuse me, Mothra. And Mothrazilla. <laughs> it's Mothrazilla now. Zilla like Godzilla. Moz like moth. Not all of us can be Canadian. Actually, I don't. Ta, you're not Canadian. Never mind. It's like half wit that's Canadian. This is a cheesy browser, isn't it? That'd be a fun name for a knockoff browser, Mozzarella. Or Mozzarella. Mazzarella. Maz. Mazzarella. Replace files with bees. Bees are pretty good. Bees as objects. Blisp. It's like lisp, but with bees instead of symbols. All right, I wonder what will happen if we just do like b root stir. And we do need to free stir now. I'm not really sure how this interaction works, just reusing it each time, but I feel like it's fine. So now to I can do the next line of input delimited by delim, terminated by a null. 
Da, 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 da. Oh, maybe it falls over. Oh, I know why it does it. It's because uh, B rude line doesn't null terminate because it just shifts your pointer. <laughs> so it was printing the whole file each time. That's why it, why it looked weird. Oh, I get it now. Okay. So since there was no null terminator, the null terminator was at the end of the file. So wherever every time we printed it, uh, it walked like the whole file. And we'd have to use B line len. So B read line is bad, and B read stir is, I think, what we want, like, always. Not enough arguments. Oh, God. Okay. B read string. Null delimiter. What? What? Terminated by a null byte. If null delim is set, the terminal delimiter will be overwritten with a null. Oh, that's nice. I too didn't want new lines. So yeah, we're going to pass that in. We'd have to do something like that anyways. I'd just replace it with a null byte anyways. What do you mean? Using breadline on ironic? Oh, I get it because it's a breadline. It's funny because Kavik is an ex-Soviet block. Okay, now that does exactly what I expected to. So that's nice. That's very nice. Okay, that is what I expected this whole time. And the freeing just works, which is really nice too. Uh, comedy there is stupid. I just don't want to accidentally, I'm going to, um, we're going to do that because I don't want to accidentally overwrite that and I don't want to introduce memory leaks if I can help it. Okay. Um, we print. Okay. This is our nice debugging output for now. We get the, the file out each time and then all we have. So the first thing we need to do, bitmapper, you are writing Swift. I am writing C. I would honestly rather write C than Swift, but if you're writing Swift, that means that people are 100% more interesting, more interested in industry um, in what you're writing. Nobody will ever read my plan nine code, except people at work that I send a link to it and they go, I don't understand, but this is kind of cool. And then I smile and they smile and everyone never talks about it again. Yeah, programmers, let's get that B read. <laughs> <laughs> I had a similar experience showing a coworkers plan nine code recently where I mentioned something about uh, Arister uh, while we were add um, lunch. So um, for those that don't know, uh, error codes, uh, you can see this here. So if you see um, this percent %r here, that's print. There's no argument for the formatter, which can look a little weird at first, but it prints the error string. Uh, and in, traditionally in POSIX environments, you only have an error number. But in the plan 9 environment, you have an error string. And we can just get that string for free. Um, more or less. And that's pretty cool. It, get, it lets us just kind of get that and functions can just set that and it works out really nicely. Not nice is like go errors as values, but it is still very nice. Free as in Libre, yes, Kvik. Um, free as in free, free as in free, free as in free, free error. Pointer has already been freed, cannot use. Um, ideally at least. But yeah, we were talking and I was like, I wish it, there's like my most missed feature in C is percent %r and error string uh, in, in non plan 9 c because I always just assume it's there and I write it in and then it's like, that's not a format specifier or something else weird happens, especially if I'm on Windows. And, <laughs> and I just... I just want error numbers and you have to use like NT status or something when you write like 
Windows code. I don't even remember. You have to call some NT function to get your error look, number lookup thing, and then you print that. And it's a whole, it's a whole ass thing. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, but here we can just write to the error string, and just get the error string. It's very nice. Yeah, the NT error no stuff is awful, Moody. I agree. I, I, I can't deal with it. Like NTC is already like kind of trippy there, there's this thing you can do um let me see i there's no way there's no way we're, we're, we're gonna make it we're gonna have a tangent here real real quick um hold on i need another win um oh, fuck it. we'll just we'll, we'll just do it outside of acme we don't need acme we don't need acme for this we'll, we'll write it in ed it's gonna be awesome um um So here's this thing you can do. Uh, this works in NTC, and we're gonna look at this, and we're gonna be like, "Oh my God, why would you, why would you ever do this?" Um, Oh shit. Um I forgot that I'm in ed and I can't go back and uh just edit things. Haha. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh you 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 know where this is going, bitmapper. Um hold on. I'm I'm so lazy, I'm just gonna do this. Uh yeah, you ready for this? God, I'm not on. I'm not on my. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's that. That's what I expected. Um. So in in NTC, the NT compiler will let you just do this. This this like you you can have a arbitrary non-constant non-literal string as your format specifier and pass it in. One of the most silly programs I wrote to demonstrate this you it read two lines of input so you do uh, you do like um, a dot out or like God yeah you do like a dot out except it's Windows so you do like out exe or some shit I don't know um, out exe and then you type in like percent D 5 and you get out five and you do like percent c five and you get out like whatever that is and <laughs> you can just sit here and one of the one of the best parts was um how this like that like you could do um percent like percent p and like uh have like just an argument in there and you would get back uh, you you wouldn't put anything in here and you get back like like the memory address and it was just it was just so bad i <laughs> what is this oh never mind that's this wow this is terrible uh but yeah that's um yeah, that was just one of the many just nightmare fuel things hiding out in. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we need to. So now we're at the point where we get a line and we can tokenize on the line. We're going to use the. Um, I think we're done caring about bio. So let's see. I, I think it is get tokens. Yes, yeah, so we can do man to get fields. And you notice we can do get fields and we get this and it gives us a normal text thing, but we can also do pipe into page and we get this nice little rendered version and I like this a lot. Um, Mora, I also like Erlang and I like Auk. They make me happy, but I think I'm a little, I'm a little too baby brain for uh, Erlang. Okay. Um, 
A multi-threaded just-in-time TIS 100, says Bitmapper. Um, so I've thought about that, and it's t totally possible. The only problem is, the only problem is, that inside a TIS 100, uh, it, it is like concurrent, like by design. Like this is ostensibly internally to TIS 100, it's multi-threaded because each node inside the TIS 100 operates on the same clock. So the one clock tick uh, shifts you one instruction forward in every, in, in every node at the same time. So when uh this occurs so we could have like uh let me just put these in real quick um so so if we we can have like two input streams and two output streams and these will go in at the same time these will pass through at the same time these will pass through the these will happen at the same time oh god um so it's already like concurrent or parallel. It's not even concurrent. We don't want to use the word concurrent because concurrency isn't parallelism, as per what Rob Pike says. Usually, the analogy he makes is he has he com com compares people conflating concurrency with parallelism. In this case, I conflated parallelism with concurrency. It's not concurrency. It is strictly parallelism. Uh, so we want we want to be articulate uh, with our wording because they are forcibly parallel. Um, it would probably work with hypercubes bitmapper. Um, I don't know a lot about hypercubes, but what I do know, it implies it would work. Wait, Kavik, I, you are wondering what this is? This is the manual for get fields. I don't, I don't understand what, do you not like, not like the manual for get fields, Kavik? I think it's pretty short. I think it's fairly succinct. Oh, they do have a tokenized function in here. It's formatted, yeah. Yeah, have you never seen this? I just showed it off. Um, hold on, uh, let me let me get out. You just pipe it into page. You can take any manual page and uh, just pipe it into page when you call man and it uh, renders it for you. On uh, Tenchi, I think I have actually a uh, man p or pman or something. Uh, I think I have pman because it's quicker to type on QWERTY. Oh man, did I just uh... <laughs> Nice. Wow, this is a lot better. P-man. I know a bit mapper. Oh man. Wow, I feel dumb. I guess I just missed this. I it's fine. I don't feel very strongly about it, but I guess I had to upgrade, upgrade uh, P-Man now to actually be good. Yeah, welcome to the 90s. Yeah, I know. I usually don't bother uh, rendering it because most of the time when I read manuals, I'm just there to look up what a specific flag does for like a program in section one. So it isn't really something that's worth having open like this. Yeah, it w I could just macro a function over man to just make it always man dash p, but then I can't use it in Acme. Well, I guess I can use it in Acme, probably. Oh, hold on, well, we, in, we invalidate this really easily. But it's not the same. Um, uh, what, get fields. Er, oh god. I don't know why my uh, delete key input isn't going through on my keyboard. I could swear that worked. Oh great, I just lost um Hold on. Yeah, okay, that's about what I expected. Okay. Shit. Um I'm just gonna make this a uh a make target. We're gonna make it a virtual target. That relies on all. Um, demo slash. I don't remember what demo has. We have test.asm and input zero. There we go. It should just work, right? 
Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So now I can just, uh, there we go. My function key is uh, being a bit weird today. I don't know why. So now we can just do this. Easy every time. Formal proof for man-p? Uh, I don't think so, bucko. Uh, let's see you write a formal pr proof first, bitmapper. Uh, I haven't written a formal proof in ages. Uh, we're gonna use tokenize out of all of this. I think tokenize is the one I want. No. Yes. Because white space is the only thing I care about. Yes. Oh, we need to strip out comments first. Um, that's something else I should add. I should add that to um, this. So we add comments to this. And we'll just... Uh, I had to comment in the middle of the block. There we go. There we go. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So now we need to strip comments, uh, down case everything, because that'll make string matching easier. Um, And then we will ingest at blocks. If found. And then we will build um, list of tokens for each node. And that's what we want. So ideally what this will look like, let me move this handy little graphic down a little bit, uh, is for like mob up down, we will have a set of strings that look like mob up down. And this is actually a fixed size three. Uh, because in TIS 100 assembly, you can only ever have two arguments to a function. However, functions can have, or not function, but instructions. And instructions can have less, so they can have zero through three arguments each. Oh, we should probably add that to spec. Zero through there are two arguments. Those are inclusive in the range. So build those tokens for each node, and that's all we're gonna do here. Because after this, we're going to For each node, for each node, turn tokens, turn list of tokens into list of instructions. Actually, we might be able to do that here. But this allows us to break up the um, break up the logic a little bit, and I kind of like that. And then that kind of into a list of instructions, and then each clock cycle it will be a cyclic list, and it walks them in a cycle. So it'll be a singly linked secular list or um yeah singly linked list that an aroboros I don't, I don't know the technical term it's an aroboros it eats its own tail um 
turn. I don't know how to spell Ouroboros actually. Um, cyclic list into cyclic list of tokens into cyclic list of instructions. And then once they are, yeah, that cyclic. I was thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, cyclic, yeah, circular list. Same idea. Circular list is, I believe, the correct term. A uh, list of instructions. I should say of opcodes with funks. Um, and I will go into the header at some point here and you can watch me completely fail at building a table of opcodes and functions. And which is ideally, basically I wanna make a table that looks something like, so I don't have to do this in Go vaguely. Um, we have like opcodes and we have our opcode structures. Um, we have like a list of opcode structures. Um, and each one will have like um, mov, um, and we'll call it literally mov. And the, the, this is um, a function pointer. This is the string name. And then we have a um, an array of args that is guaranteed to be an array of args that's guaranteed to be t at least two uh, and ones nil means no arg. So that's roughly the idea of the data structure I'd like to build here. Um, and then the interface for these is it's really just a um, um, we call mov oh shit I don't think I actually need to store the argument set because this really should just take a uh, every function just take like an a b so we can spawn like an instance of, uh, like so we build a chain of opcodes string name I want kind of like a lookup table of string names to um, opcode instances. Well, we get the we get the base idea, but it'd be like my uh, mov from two. I believe is how it works. I think that's how it works in Tiz one hundred. It's gonna be really awkward if it's flipped, but I guess it won't be that hard to fix. You just flip flop. Be something like this. I don't think this is quite right though. Because really, I mean, if this was Go, I'd store a anonymous function for each one. And that's like, I know how to do that. It's like really easy. So I just emit like, um, I just have a list of like funk mov a b and then it just does like just does that ideally which is kind of what i'm trying to emulate um well i'll just scrap this for now we'll worry about this later um we're not there yet but it's nice to have into the air as something we kind of already know uh, exists. So, don't need the readme. Haven't needed the readme in a while. Um, oh, uh, Pao, I just saw your question in Twitch chat. Um, I'm glad Amavec is answering. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
So let's see. I just use value of up, down, add three down. Yeah, I think arm of x answer is correct. Basically, instructions are just things you do, and arguments are context for how you do the thing. So, like, we it, we write um, here. I will. Uh, this is actually, and Bitmapper is gonna love this. Um, this is really easily rep represented with what's called an S expression, uh, which is nice to Google. Um, I like S expressions. Uh, so if we consider the logic two plus three, okay, um, we can think we can break this down into a function that. Dude, Mischief, you gotta, you gotta give me time. I need to like think about it. I'm a little baby brain, and also I'm doing this in front of people, and you have no idea the amount of anxiety I'm going through right now, coupled with at least 16 ounces of coffee. The coffee was very good though, um, but it certainly did not help. But it does mean I get to use my brain now a little bit. Not that there's a lot there to use. Um, so anyways, we can look at this uh, two plus three, we can think of the plus as a function, uh, which in this in this context we'll, we'll call an instruction. The instruction we're doing is three. Uh, in the actual assembly uh, instruction set for TIS 100, this is literally called add, A-D-D. Um, so we can, we'll, we'll, we'll actually rewrite it this way. So we wouldn't write two add three, right? Um, so we wanna rearrange this. Uh, how we'd rearrange this if we treat plus as an instruction is we'd probably write plus two three. This is uh, in mathematics what's called reverse Polish notation. Um, and I'm not worried about what's better for this bitmapper. I don't care if ML would be better. I'm writing it in C. I'll rewrite another one in ML later if I actually ever finish this. Uh, it's probably not getting finished today. This is kind of a seeing if I do this, how terrible it goes and how little I get done. Uh, so plus two three. Um, if we want to rewrite this, we'd re uh, in the reverse Polish notation. You can think of instructions as being in reverse Polish notation. So we can rewrite this as add two three, um, which just adds two to three. Um, so the, this would return to us um, God five. Is that just Polish notation? Is reverse the other way? Where if it's two, three plus? Uh, okay, excuse me. It is just Polish notation. I always get that mixed up. I thought that one five plus was Polish notation and plus one five was reverse Polish, but whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the idea is still correct. It's just I mixed up the name. So add is the instruction here, which is plus. Plus is the instruction and two and three are arguments to this and it takes two arguments. Uh, add takes two arguments here and combines them together to become five. You can expand this to like anything else. Like uh, if you, I am, um, this is easier to illustrate in a language that actually like makes S expressions a bit more obvious, like Lisp. You see something like um, plus two, three, or excuse me, plus two, three. Um, and then you can do like uh, plus and I mean, I, my, my formatting is going to be horrible here, but uh, you can do like plus two, two, five. And if we expand this, this becomes like a plus. So we could draw this out as plus, plus two, two, five, like this. And this will evaluate to four this of course evaluates to five we apply the plus and out of all of this we get the nine right instructions are run like that yeah that's that's kind of the idea i'm illustrating in twitch chat um pal42 asked uh what the discrimination between an instruction and an argument is and i'm using s expressions to kind of and Polish notation to kind of illustrate it better because Polish notation is how functions slash instructions work. Like in this way, I should say how instructions are written. So Polish notation makes sense.
um, to show this off. Uh, so if we just think everything is Polish notation, the first thing in the like this like little structure we're building is the instruction, and the everything that comes after it is arguments. Um, and unlike Lisp, we can't just nest instructions. Uh, Fired in an FPN, which is why fourth uses it. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can implement it a lot of different ways. I I don't even know if I'll end up using S expressions. That seems like a lot of work to set that up. Uh, but I might end up doing it uh, indirectly and poorly anyways. Who knows? It's hard to say. Uh, but th th this is effective. I, I'm really just taking the lazy way. I don't need S expressions since they won't nest into each other. Says I can't have an add instruction embedded as an argument to another add instruction, so I don't need an S expression for that. I can just like take the first thing uh, in Polish notation, take the instruction and everything after as arguments. And we can only ever have two arguments in TIS 100 instruction set. So this is my thesis. Um, okay. Okay, so turn this in with opcode of opcode, a list of func pointer and args. Yeah, there we go. So what we'll probably do is um, we'll probably do like do up, and we'll do function pointer um, arg0 arg1 or you can just say um, args2 something like that yeah that's probably best and we'll implement do up somewhere else and do up we'll just um, so we'll look them up here and it would be nice if it was a table, but I might just make it a switch case if I'm feeling naughty. No, we'll make it a table. We'll, we'll, we'll go the whole mile. We'll make it a table of uh, strings mapping to function pointers. So we can automatically retrieve it and expand it for free without actually implementing switch case logic and code repetition. And then we'll... Yeah, we'll do that. This is enough work for now. Okay, so we'll start with stripping comments, and after this, we'll um, we'll start the clock, iterate for as many cycles as we have inputs plus uh, cycles as we have ingested inputs present. And this will just be a big while. Wheel. All right, that's that's basically everything. Um, and the, the this will be the 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 big to do. Imagine being someone who uses slash slash to do. Darken six six six. Welcome. Who do you hate? Is it? I'm gonna guess. Uh, first, oh, is it because you're halfwit or are you just Kavik? I can see Kavik having a name like Darken666. That seems like, oh, ding, ding, ding. Amazing. I think it's because, uh, I, I feel, I feel like, uh, A, calling out halfwit and B, having a name with 666 sounds sufficiently Kaviki. I'm very proud of you. I guess you probably can't get the username Kavik. I don't know. Kavik's not very uh Kavik's not very uh common as a Western name, so who knows? But I guess your it's your whole name is Victor, so who knows? Lord Ta, hi Ta. It's nice to see you talking on Twitch and not just Discord. If somebody wants a bitmapper, you're writing Swift. Um if you if you want to earn uh lots of brownie points bitmapper 
Oh, I got outwitted? Shit. Anyways, um, uh, Bitmapper, you should write me a Twitch bot that bridges Discord to Twitch, and we can get a, uh, we can get like a, I'll, I'll make like a server just for that, and we can bridge it and it'll be great. I don't know, I don't know if that's like a thing we can do. Alt ID Twitch chat FS, that would be nice. I feel like Halfwit has, um, better things to do though <laughs> than make Twitch chat FS, considering there's a whopping one of us that stream Play 9 content right now. But if there was more, it might be kind of fun. Twitch chat is the one thing you could probably make an FS for and it not be terrible. But you can probably wrap the whole th I mean, I, I shouldn't say probably, you definitely can wrap the whole thing using like REST APIs or at the absolute minimum gross abuse of uh, HTML parsing to pull everything you need out, somehow acquire the video stream and uh, represent the video stream as a file. But I don't, there was, there was someone asking about this, I think on the Plan 9 IRC recently, that uh, QRS2 be Kirstiv or whatever uh, threw shade at. And Kirstiv was like, 9P is not meant for video. I think it was Kirstiv. Kirstiv was like, 9P isn't meant for video. It'd be terrible. And the guy was like, I want video over 9P. That'd be kind of cool. And that was like the extent of the conversation. But I don't think video over 9P would go very well. But who knows? Maybe you uh, may maybe you find a nice way to work around it. Who knows? You don't have much to do right now. Wait, Darken666, are you halfwit? Wait. I don't remember if I've already seen a half wood in this chat. Wow. UUCP. I my argument was just use UDP. Oh, okay. I got debated. Honestly, I just expected your name to be like half wood or something. Uh, by the way, I I can't really tell on my screen, but it is like, okay, the resolution is like legible, even if the text is a little blurry. I really should, I, I, I didn't even consider that uh, the text on the stream would be kind of like awful to read, but hmm. I might amp up the resolution next time because I think it's compressing down to 720p and the resolution is definitely higher than 720p for the VM. I added a custom Visa BIOS um resolution in virtual box so this is the, the stream is running out of a virtual box vm and uh it's running at like 1280 by 960 i think which is pretty close to 720p which is probably why it doesn't look just completely awful but i don't know i, I don't know if streaming would really work with more than a uh, 720p Okay, anyways, uh, back to work. Uh, we're going to strip out comments. Uh, before we do down case, and then we'll tokenize. Is there a... Oh, God. Oh, God. Is there a nice down case function for plan 9? Uh... Oh man, ASCII centric. Oh no. C type dot H. I feel like that's some kind of POSIX thing. That's ASCII centric. Oh, okay. This one takes runes. Nice. Hmm. It would be nice to have the Tiz 100 that we use be, um, what about in strings? What do you mean in strings? Oh, strings.h? Well, I don't think we, well, strings.h is, um, I was looking at what I, just too lower. 
So you say just too lower, but it would be really nice if we were Unicode compliant, and I think that would break. Um, so I kind of want to convert the char star to a rune star, and then just operate in pure Unicode from this point forward. Is there a um, follow-up question? Is there an easy way of converting between the two? I've written conversion function before, but it was very messy, and I really do not want to. Um, right, right, too low a rune, but I, I need my char star as a rune star now. Rune to char, char to rune. There we go. So char to rune is what we want. So we're gonna char to rune first, which means we'll actually free stir up there now. Does it allocate for us? I guess it doesn't matter. We, we know it's going to be at least the same number of characters. Though I guess we can do rune stir len or rune, rune len on it and it should just work. Um. Rune char to rune copies starting at one to one rune R turns the number of bytes copied. If the input is not exactly in UTF format, we'll convert to rune error and return one. So I need to allocate a new buffer. Okay. Um, so I'll do rune star S equals calic. Um, Rune len stir size of rune. Ooh, rune sm print. Whoa, what? What? I didn't know this was a thing. Does rune sm print allocate? Moody, do you know? This is crazy. Rune sm print. I don't know what SM print does. Okay, of course it does. Okay. So I'll have to free it. Okay. SM prints is except that it prints into and returns a string the required length. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Holy shit. Okay. Um do you need the capital mischief? I'm sorry I do this to you. You have to understand I'm just a baby. I'm just a baby mischief. Do I need the capital S specifier? I'm not sure. Or does it like flip it? for uh because i thought percent capital s was the one for unicode strings but maybe it doesn't matter um is that in here s verb Oh, I see. You do have to use the small s because you're interpreting uh, that. Okay. Um, so we'll free stir and then we'll make this. Um, here we go. So now, 
we want to verify yeah 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 that makes sense i had a i had a moment so now we can do this ah, nice fancy like it a lot okay okay oh shit but does tokenize work on oh god it doesn't use a rune star oh do i write my own tokenizer do i write my own tokenize is there a rune tokenize man man It'd certainly be something if there was fucking like a uh, rune stir talk, but not a, a rune tokenize. For a system that m invented UTF-8, there's a disturbing amount of not UTF-8 in here. Because really, I feel like optimally, you have as little Char Star floating around as possible. All right, whatever. We'll write our own tokenize. It'll be a good exercise. See me fuck it up. I actually, I don't want to write it at all. So I guess I could tokenize. Get around this by lazily tokenize first. Yeah, and then convert. Yeah. Oh man. Feels so dirty though. But I guess we have to. All right, well, this is gonna be a thing. This is gonna happen. Uh, so we need to tokenize first, convert tokens to UTF-8. And this is going to use a still gonna do that before we leave. Thankfully, we should only get three tokens, and if we get more, we don't worry about it. So we can have rune star talks equal or size three. Is that how that works? Or can we do, is that what I want? Not quite sure on the precedence there. That looks right though. Hmm. That's probably fine. Um. Okay. So do that. Going to. Get rid of this tokenize down here. So that means we need to down case first too. So we need to move the down casing to up here. So we need to go through, no, we need to down case after because we want to use the rune. Holy shit. Um, we want to use the rune to lower, oh God which was um, uh, da, 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 da. two lower rune. There we go. Just use that. Eh. There we go. There we go. So we'll call. We're not going to use tokenize. We are going to use tokenize. Maybe we want to not use tokenize, and instead, I'm going to use get tokens and 
I'm going to also allow semicolons, I think. Or I'm going to tokenize on semicolons. I think that would be a good idea. It's a little standard breaking, but it's kind of fun. So rather than just new lines being significant, we can use um, semicolons. Though, actually, no, we're not going to because I would need to do that at in a different order because presently I already get lines based on new lines. And the at sings need to be on their own new line, so we're not going to allow semicolons. I, I would have to like redo how this parsing is working because this, this tokenizing process is heavily dependent on new lines being significant. So we'll just use get tokens and use that on white space. Or use tokenize and just use it on white space. So we can do int n. Because tokenize returns blem set to tab, carriage return new line, space, except the quotes are interpreted, but do not appear in the resulting args. I don't actually want that. I want that to be like a, the anticipation of whether an actual lexer and parser will appear is killing me. Well, you see, um, uh, that, that you, you, I think you're expecting a lot from me. Will you does get tokens, get tokens, same as get fields, multi flag, not zero except the fields may be quoted I'm using single quotes. I don't want that. We'll use get fields, I guess. Because I don't want single quotes to just be interpreted. I don't like that. I don't think I want that. It's not part of the language. All right, so we'll use get fields. Dude, just make it a VM. I don't know, Bitmapper, you write the VM. I, I have thought of this though. I did think that would be fun to make it a VM, make an assembler, make bytecode, and then make it so you can pack it all into like a little runtime and just pa pass around a cute little executable um, out of the assembler and it, it just packs the runtime and it just kind of works. That would be like a fun plan. It would take me, at the pace I go when I'm streaming like this, it would take me a thousand years but it'd be pretty fun. So we're gonna do stir uh, that. Try star star args. Oh, that's the stuff it goes into, I see. Um, does that need to be pre-allocated? Does get fields allocate? Or do I need like, oh, pointers. No, it doesn't. Okay. Char star star C talks. So C talks. Well, I hope not. We'll find out pretty quickly. The maximum number. Oh, okay. C talks three. There we go. C talks. The answer is three. We want at most three tokens. And then the multi flag is, is one. Multi flag was weird to me when I first learned about this. I didn't really get it. And then we need delimiters. And it's going to be back T, back R, back N. Um, they say whack at Microsoft. They don't say backslash or back. They say whack. So they're like whack, whack for backslash, backslash. And it kind of weirds me out a little bit. It's like fine. It's just, uh, I, I just didn't, I don't know why they're called wax. <laughs> like back, it's kind of like almost the same. Yeah, it's pretty whack. I agree. <laughs> whack, 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 whack. That's the, that's the, that's a meme template. It's a result of. <laughs> Come on, be nice now. Um, n returns the number of just the number of delimiters, right? Does it say what they return? I don't think it actually says what they return. Am I missing it? I'm just guessing it's the number of uh, tokens. We'll find out. Um, so I guess we just see if this works. See if this even compiles. Nice. 
Auto declared and not used. Oh, that's fine. In char array. Oh, it wants it to be a star star, just straight up. Okay. Name that declared. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. Oh, it's because I free it. I free S, don't I? Acid support for TIS 100 binaries? Never. Seg fault. Do I have stack on here? I don't. Oh god, I haven't used acid in forever. Um. Wait, was that supposed to call new? There oh, god. Um Oh, there we go. That's kind of more what I was expecting. <sighs> eh. Free stir. What is that? It's allocated. What? What? Hold up. Is it because we try to print this? You have rune sm print commented out. It doesn't allocate it. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Is that how that works? Nope. This would be easier if I just actually wrote all of it. End you went and in char for as. Is there syntax for this? It's been a hot minute. I'm just I'm I'm just gonna actually write this. Um, I just want to. Um, I guess I can print it anyways before it seg faults. Um, Ntox equals percent d. Make sure that's what I want it to be. Oh, it's just completely incompatible. Yeah. Okay. We'll just let it seg fault. Did it say fault before that? This is messy. I hate this. Okay, whatever. Whatever. Um, okay. So then we want to turkinize and then we're going to do is this how this works is this the order of how things work if I want three tokens or three pointers I can never remember um so I'm gonna do Oh yeah, and if actually I don't think I need that n because we know it's going to at least be three. So we can do four. Four i equals zero. I is less than three. I plus plus. C style or C plan nine C style, so we'll leave that unspaced. And then we're going to do T 
cox i equals rune sm print percent s what is it ctox i do that should be all we need Ooh, I wonder if I can pass through. Do I have to do two lower on each character? I guess it doesn't matter. It'll have to iterate over each character anyways. So we'll just do that later. So this is just one thing. We're going to free, free the stir. And then we'll print um, S doesn't exist. Well, it'd be nice to print the tokens though. Um, so, so I'm gonna print. This is just debugged. So we're gonna do tokens. We're gonna do. S and then tox I and see if this just like works, you know? Oh, nice. Used and not set. Oh god. Why is that all the way up there? It's a little weird. It is set here. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. I feel like I've run into this issue before too. And acid three four one three L stack. C tox is null. Ill yeah. Do I actually need to allocate it? So I tried making it. Where did this break? Here? What? What? Fault right. Is it tox? Oh god. Killed my win. Pointer edition not fully declared. Not an L value. Not fully declared. It's because of this, isn't it? It's what I get. Get fields requires you to alloc. Got it. I guess I used it in bankfs. I could always look at the very cursed bankfs code. Okay, does it, but it just returns a pointer to, um, to uh, somewhere inside what you give it though. So you guess you only need to allocate like the three slots in this case. So we do like ctox equals um, calic three size of char star or whatever. All right, and there's this. Um, I guess I could allocate this, but I don't really want to. I kind of want it to be like static, but I don't know how to like do that properly. Or like I want it to be three static indices. But I guess it doesn't super matter. It's just kind of disappointing. But this will make it more obvious. Just means I have to deallocate more carefully. Whoa. 
を。Hey, that's something. Ooh. I'm making it harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're supposed to make it easier, but they're making it harder. Ah, there we go. That works. That's kind of fun. I like this a lot. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, okay. Wow, that was really satisfying. That that just works now. I'm glad it works now. Move up, move down, move up, move down. It's it's kind of fun to see how uh because it nulls out. So if we do um if talks i not equal nil do that or er. that didn't change anything oh wait is this literally printed into the string <laughs> oh i see i see i see gross does that mean i have to like stir comp that i really just want to nil comp that I guess that probably happens here. Um, so I guess we could do if ctox i does not equal nil. Yeah, there we go. And this. No, I do need that because they can still be nil now. They will be nil now because we don't uh, necessarily print into them. It is very cursed NDB code in BankFS Moody, I agree. It is certainly not holy and it is certainly not healthy, much like my code right here. So we can free stir. This free stir actually is really nice. Um, because that means that uh all the get fields um stuff since they're just pointers into stir kind of just disappear too, so we can free stir so we can free stir and then we can free. C talks. That should be all we have to do, I think, for that. And then down here, I'll need to um, free talks before I do that. For i equals zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. If um, talks i does not equal nil, free talks i. I think that's right. Bop. Nice. Yeah, BankFS is on my uh, GitHub tall. Yeah. I'd say it's on my Bitbucket, but uh, Bitbucket's decided to uh, burn some books and totally guillotine mercurial repositories. Which I don't particularly like, but there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, wow. Sometimes my inputs get buffered weirdly in Acme and stuff like that happens. Okay, so we have all of this, including the debug output that I don't need anymore, because now we know it works. Um, I guess I have to ignore, I don't want to tokenize comments. So I think up here, Yeah, I want to do skip comments. If stir zero is equal to, no, I can't do that. Um, hmm. Oh, actually doing this after tokenize works really nicely because we know the first token should be a pound sign. 
uh, because we've already stripped out all the white space. So we don't need to scan through to see if it's white space separated. We can just look at the first token. And if the first token is a pound sign, then we can just go on our merry way and continue the loop rather than, uh, or, or skip this iteration of loop and call continue rather than go through everything else. So we can do that right here. So we can do skip comments. If tox one does not equal nil, what? I don't understand. We'd be checking if tox or we don't even need tox. We can do this in C tox because we um, it's an ASCII character. Um, right, right. Oh, I see. Just not equal nil. Uh, you can have no argument uh, instructions. So we don't actually want to check to see if there's no arguments because there's instructions that have no arguments. So that's not a good uh, check, but that would be clever. That would be a good check, a very uh, session check if uh, we could, because then you'd be correct. Um, but yeah, we otherwise we just do, um, and we actually use the zeroth token. It would have to be the first token, otherwise it's not a comment because we don't support, uh, we're not gonna support comments that are in line. The comments have to be on a new line. I guess, hmm. Because normally I'd implement this, uh, as, normally when I do things like this, I implement it so it scans rune by rune. Uh, and at that point, I just detect that if any point uh, we hit a rune, we just skip over it. Um, so I think, I need to put this in two places. One, if it's an inline comment, uh, we can skip the loop entirely and we will need to deallocate. So if, um, so if C tox I or zero, zero is equal to pound, then hmm, I think I do want the end from this. So do end to end equals, or do actually put a end to end equals zero or end to end up here, do n equals zero, um, n equals get fields, da 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 da. And we, we're also going to skip empty lines. So if n is less than one, then we're going to, um, we need to free C talks since we get alloced it, and then we're going to continue. Um, so if n is less than one, we do that before this, and then we do if zero, zero, that then we also free, we do the same thing um, that might not be safe um, oh have fun bitmapper have fun teaching them about common lists that's kind of that's kind of fun See a bit mapper. Um, so the same line comment, and then down here, if it does not equal nil, and C tox I does not equal um, I does not equal pound. So this will take care of them if they're on the same line. Yeah, and then we just don't print it in and it will be a nil. 
if for whatever reason we pick up this token. So th this this would account for if we did um, something like I don't know I don't know what a uh, what a good single argument instruction to show this off is, but but if we did like sing um, foo does foo, and for whatever reason we had like this show up, um, this would get nilled out now thanks to this check because we check to see if the first character of the token is a pound sign. Um, so it lets us have same line comments in things with less than because if it if it was a two argument I, I this is also valid for a like um if for whatever reason we do this uh we can't since nop is valid in structure or like uh hcf and this is something that might actually show up halt catch fire um if for whatever reason someone had this on the line then we would not tokenize halt and catch. We would just skip it and these would become nil after processing. Ooh, so that looks a lot better. Um, now we see the tokens we get look much more reasonable. So I'm actually gonna change this up a little bit. Um, let's see how many tokens we detect here. This might give us a fun insight. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so now these are the tokens we care about. And let me just add to um, the test.asm something that uh, we'll, we'll insert an instruction somewhere where it doesn't matter, like. Uh, one and we'll do not potato and then we'll do um not a uh, halt catch fire um foo bar and we can test our tokenizer against those Ooh, that's not what i wanted what Hold up. Oh, I see. We need this check um, so we don't follow anything after the comment. So we need to check it all the way up here. If ctox i zero is equal to, and I have this L here because um, Oh, actually, I can just do a, I have the L here. So if you haven't seen this in Plan 9C before, it indicates that it's a Unicode rune rather than an ASCII character. This affects uh, how wide it is when it's inserted uh, in memory. So here we can just continue at no cost. This will just be nil. JK, there's a cost. Um, oh, I see. This needs to be nested logic within the nil. So this needs a curly brace. Now, just do that. Clearly separate them. Yeah, oh, that didn't work. Let's see, what is wrong with this? So if it's not nil, and the first character is a pound sign, we still tokenize not from potato, but we see in here that there is a pound sign here. So surely this should. What's wrong, Marcy? What's up? Is it your dinner time? It's not quite your dinner time. You're not allowed to be hungry yet. I gotta break the loop. Oh shit, yeah, you're totally right. I continued instead of breaking. Yeah, there we go. Now I just have not been halt catch fire. Thank you, Darken. Myers, are you saying hi to the stream? Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear the cat or not. Marcy is hungry. 
Normally she eats at about four, but she starts begging well before that. I know. Well, not even four. She eats at like 4.30. At earliest. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately I can't mute the cat. I could put her in another room, but she'd just come back, so... I'm certainly not going to lock her in another room. Her name's Marcy. She's a one-year-old-ish, slightly over a year, uh, feral rescue. And she's very vocal and very hungry all the time, even though she's well-fed. She's just really excited to have food. It is interesting that since, um, since we strip stuff out in the Unicode tokenizing phase, we see the number of tokens isn't really uh, updated properly. And we could uh, reset this, actually. All right. Thanks, Darkened. Have a good night. So this is just kind of a silly little ism, but we could reset n if we really wanted. So after this, we can do like um, n equals zero. And every time we add a real one, we can do that. We'll get rid of the print here. And we'll make the debug a bit nicer by adding it at the end. Print space percent D. We'll print N. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. Does it look slightly better if I tab it? A little bit. Yeah. So we see there's one token, three tokens. Cool. I know Marcy. Okay. So now we need to downcase everything. I know, Marcy. I'm not paying attention to you. I'm doing anything else instead. She's very needy. I wish I had a webcam and I'd show you her, but then I'd have a webcam and that would not uh, help with my speed at doing things here. <laughs> so now you can go through all the tokens each line so we'll just do um, we're actually we can reuse n here so we don't even have a uh, erroneous logic hiding out and we can do talks I want to do the classic ij for j equals zero j is less than n or j um, is less than runesterlen tox i j plus plus tox i equals two lower rune tox or tox i j equals two lower rune tox i j and i might just make print tokens happen later It'd be nice to have it happen at a, uh, we already stripped comments. So actually it should um, happen about here. And we can keep this as it used to be because it's just the same thing. Just 
get rid of all the printing up here, wherever that's hiding out now. Yeah, there we go. Oh, what did I do? What did I do wrong here? What the fuck? That was it. That was everything. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I, uh, that was a little spooky. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Make this a little nicer. Why even bother with runes? Because I would like it to be UTF-8 compliant. Because I'm a little baby. And it's nice. I would like them to be runes. And that is enough for me. I want them to be runes, Mischief. That's all I got for you. When you write your TIS 100, you can use char stars and it'll be great. It'll be just as good and it'll do exactly the same thing. Okay. What time is it? 3.46? So now I need to care about if we're in an at block or not. That'll have to happen outside the line. Where do you live? I live in Seattle. Why? You want to come visit me, Mischief? We can get coffee and beer together and talk about why I hate, why you hate runes and why chars are the best thing ever. Or you can pet my cat. Yeah, that's because you're in like California and Seattle and California, as far as I know, overlap almost completely in terms of time zone. Not that I would know, I'm new to the West Coast, but I'm from baby Midwest land where time zones are an ephemeral social construct and you pass through them all the time if you're actually traveling. They do overlap, thank you. Thank you, Pal42. Oh, 347, to make dinner. Um, I at least like to get the app blocks working. It would be nice if I got this working first, so we'll, we'll shoot for that. Um, but I do require a little bit of infrastructure here. For me to know which app block, I need to have a list of nodes, and I need to have a table of nodes pre-existing, or at least I'd like to. Um, so in here, I don't really know what this is. This isn't doing anything right now. So that's just there. Um, and we can do type def struct. We'll call them CPUs because that's what they're referred to as in game. I know Marcy, you're hungry. It's also a stopping point. CPU. I know. I know. I would like to keep them in memory as a uh, as a uh, matrix i don't want to stripe them out even though the numbering stripes out um i'll just have to do a little bit of quick math to make it work hi sage the other cat's here i have two cats the little one is on my keyboard 
and trying to drink my coffee. And making things hard. Okay, um, so I wanted to have CPU struct, CPUs, um, we'll have registers, we don't need that right now, but what we do need is a list of instructions. So I need a singly linked list, and I don't really want to write that. I will just use an existing one, I think. Hopefully there's no overlap between what I have now and what's there. Oh god, that means that I need to pound include the list.h up here. I don't really want to do that. I know, Marcy. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Maybe I just uh, stripe the... I think fuzz.h has the latest version of my hacky little link list. So I'm gonna, this is very cursed code. Hi Sage. Very cursed source. Okay, so it uses list.h and list.c. So we're gonna just kind of put this in here. Um, oh. And we're going to open this. Very cursed code. But we'll just do it. We're just gonna yeet it into here. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Cat. Oh my god. She really wants on the keyboard. I really don't want her on the keyboard. Oh my god, I can't see anything. Anyways, all right, I, I hold on, I need to distract the cats and get them off my keyboard. Okay, I'm good now. Um, okay. I'm not guaranteeing that this list implementation is bug free. However, it does already exist, which is more than list. And then it would be nice to have instructions as Her list. Um, yeah, there we go. Wait. Yes. This is a list of X. So this is. I might actually have to modify this list to. Um, be cyclic because I don't think this one is cyclic. So this is cyclic list of instructions to iterate through um, clock cycles. Wow, I hate that. Um, list. Ah, okay. Nothing I say will make it more obvious, so it'll just be there. Um. So I guess I have this list API set up such that it's kind of like a uh, um, a linked list uh, or like a array list in Java because that's about the time in my life when I first wrote it. 
Hi, Darkens. Nice to see you back. Um, so now I'm going to make a thinking. I need my matrix now. So I need CPU height width. Yeah, CPU, CPUs. Is this build? Nice. Hi, Sage. I need to update my make file. Oh my god, the cat's back. Or I should say the kitten's back. It's them telling me that I need to go feed them. And then I need that. Nice. Nice. Okay. So that builds. That's pretty nice. It's nice that that just kind of works. Um, so we're going to populate this list of instructions. The list of instructions we're going to put into it is I think going to just be called um, an instruction which is composed of an op code and this yes so I don't remember how to declare function pointers. <laughs> I need to double check that. I do not remember the syntax. It always throws me off a little bit. Okay. Um, oh, okay. That's, that's easy. Maybe. Hold up. So I'm going to do Oh god. Uh type def void Um, op funk and it's going to be takes two arguments I don't really know what arguments are supposed to be yet so probably make some kind of register and make a register a union or something I don't know um, for now, it'll just get we'll just give it int int for now, even though that's wrong. And then we need to move the opcode definitions up because declarations need to be come before they're used. Oh my God, come on. Well, I guess we're not using them yet. Does this still build? It still builds. And then the op code will have a. Let's see if I remember how to use this. We need an op. Can I just do this? Wow, you are miserable, Marcy. We think you're being tortured. Do I need H files in this? I don't think I do, but it's not a. It's not. Oh my god. Cat. 
I don't think I need H files. I think those are just for libraries that need that. Um, there's only 50 instructions per CPU. Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. You just make it a, uh, you just make it a fixed length or a fixed width static array, and then um, shit. You're totally right. Um, that's a really good point. Yes, you are absolutely correct. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, that means I don't need the list anymore. That's kind of exciting. So then we can have um, um, well, I do still want yes, so we do opcode max ops. Is that what I called it? That's what I should have called it. I did call it that. Okay, so we're gonna pull this down. Nice. I still don't remember if I need this or not. Um, what? Or, oh, that's because we're not, um, right, right, right. Right, right, right. There we go. So that's pretty cool. So now I have an opcode for each one. And in here, well, actually, I don't want it to be opcodes yet. I want it to be instructions because the instructions will call opcodes and call the handlers for those op codes. But I guess it's kind of all the same. Um, I just embed the arguments in the op code. It just moves the logic uh, somewhere else. But I think doing instructions where you store, well, hmm. we'll do this. We'll see what happens. Fuck around, who knows. Um, so that's the string representation, um, func to run with opcode, and then we need, uh, arguments can be several different things. I kind of want to just make an input type that can either be a register or, um, a constant value. I don't really know a nice way to do that, and that's like a big step up from here. And also it's four o'clock and I need to get food and I need to, um, oh, I haven't been looking at Twitch chat. Um, I do call myself a programmer. I'm just a little baby. Just trying to think things out. But yeah. Okay, I don't know. Uh, op code, op func should take this kind of argument type. The argument type is either a register or a constant value, but I could just make them registers. And when we have a constant value, we just make a stub. Um, we just have like a stub register that, um, well, but we want them to be pointers. Having a stub pointer is kind of messy because then we need to determine if we need to free or not. It was a little messy. Kind of want to pass by reference. 
rather than, or like past references rather than uh, values in this case. And the kitten is very distracting. Hmm. I think I'll just stop here for today. Because this compiles. I need arguments. I'm going to stop here for today, and I'll come back and solve this later. It's going to be a hell of a git push. Delete. Delete. Um, I'll s I kind of want to save this as a scratch pad. So we'll do that. Git status. Um, let's edit the git ignore. I thought I wanted to ignore everything in the save directory. Is my syntax wrong? Er. Yeah, my syntax was wrong. Scratch spec. Oh, wow. I did not like that. Can do that. I wonder what that was all about. I'm gonna save this trace actually and send this to Jerusalem. That's pretty bad. <laughs> Mischief, I'm sorry you didn't see this reach fruition today. I'm very uh, disappointed in myself, but I hope you can understand. This is the first time I've done something quite this intricate before. Uh, I don't. I haven't really dabbled in writing or implementing a language or assembler or anything like that. So this is all new territory for me. Closest I've gotten was implementing a very bad shell that you could not nest anything in. Yeah, I'm gonna go eat. Um, git commit dash m. Progress after burst stream. The creds are already in factotum, so it should just push. That looks right. Can probably verify. Ugh. And uh, repository, oh nice, yeah, it worked. Uh, repository is here, not that it really matters. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go eat. I'm gonna go feed the cats, more importantly, before Marcy loses her mind because she hasn't eaten in, since her last meal. But, all right, thank you. And I'm sorry to make more progress, but I hope everything made sense along the way. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know if there's anything I can do better next time other than write more code. That's a kind of a given. Terminating stream.